What's going on, everybody? Aaron Trevino here back on our real estate and construction podcast down in the beautiful, beautiful state of Texas. And today we are joined by none other than Royce Colley from Dallas, Texas. How are you doing today, Royce? Oh, man, all is well. How about yourself, Aaron? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I know we'd uh, we talked a little bit, you know, um, you know, a bit about about the show. And, you know, I'm real excited to have you on today. Oh, likewise, man. I appreciate you having me. I'm looking forward to it. So this is my second podcast for the day. I was on one earlier um, at 3 p.m. Central Time, man. So this is my second one for the day. I'm excited. So, you know, whatever you want to talk about, man, it's cool with me. OK, I- I'm a little biased, but I-, I like to think this will be your be- best pos- podcast of the day, right? Hey, man. Hey, I have no problems with that, man. Let's make it the best. Okay. Sounds good, Royce. Well, you know, I, I appreciate you coming on. You know, for those of us who aren't too familiar with you, you know, would you introduce yourself, please? Oh, definitely. Um, well, my name is Royce Colley. I go by R. Dyson Colley, the gentleman builder. Uh, I'm an independent home builder here in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Um, I've been building for the last six years, going on seven years this year. Um, I do a different um, style of building. So I build for a lot of real estate investors. I also build for myself. I have a a department or a um, part of my company that's a home building company as well as the new construction. I mean, as well as the construction piece. And so I build for a lot of clients. I build for myself. Um, And so, you know, I'm just, you know, trying to uh, create something with, with what this industry has given me. So. Absolutely. I, I love to hear it. And, you know, really, you know, we all know Texas, you know, statewide is really in a housing shortage. So, you know, when you can find a good builder, you know, that's, that's, that's great to see, you know. Yeah, definitely, man. Um, you know, I'm, I'm in real big into, into learning about my industry, industry and things like that. So, you know, it, it, for me, it works well as an independent builder, because I get to do some things to my houses that, you know, maybe the big builders don't do because of cost and things like that. So, you know, I really have a passion for it, man. I enjoy building. I've kind of touched on uh, a lot of facets in real estate. So I've done wholesaling and I've done uh, subject to and I've done flips and all of that type of stuff. But building is what I really like the most. I really, you know, uh, really enjoy doing it. I built my first house in 2017. And since then, man, I've built uh, upward of about uh, 50, um, you know, since then, since that that first build. And so, man, I'm just looking to grow, uh, looking to uh, build my first subdivision latter part of this year, earlier next year. And so, man, we're just going to try to take it to the moon. Take it to the moon. I, I love it. That's beautiful. Take it to the moon, man. <laughs> I love it. You know, if you're going to think, you may as well think think big, right? Oh, definitely, man. There's no other way to think. No <laughs> other way to think. Go yeah. big, go home. Yes, sir. Now, you know, and I'm curious. You said something really interesting, Royce. You said that you've been in different in uh, different parts of the industry. You know, you've done the wholesaling. You've you've had kind of your you you know your your hat in, in different different parts of the of of the game. Um, you know, to you, what's special about building? Out of any part of the business, why why building? Well, for me, um, being that I've done multiple flips and things like that, I like building better because I know what to expect from the build process, right? I know that when I start building and I get framed up, I know that my electrical is new. So I know there's not going to be too many issues that can go on with new electrical system or new HVAC system, new plumbing system. Um, What I found in my experience doing flips is I may budget for a $50,000 renovation or rehab and get into the house and get behind the walls. And now I have to update all the electrical, which is another four or five grand, right? Something that I didn't expect. So now that throws off the budget and now I have to account for an additional cost that I didn't foresee in the beginning. So with building, I know what I'm getting into. I know what my bill is going to cost. I I have everything laid out. Um, I build from a number of different plans that I've did cost analysis for and things like that. So the biggest part of building for me is finding a lot and a market that actually fits my criteria for building and what my, um, my retail sale value is going to be. Absolutely. You know, and, and it's funny, I've heard a few of those stories. I mean, you know, really, you know, sometimes surprises are good, but when you're in a deal, you don't want to see a <laughs> oh, surprise. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's definitely true, man. And I've had them um, with Flip, some of my first earlier experiences in real estate, man, where we've gotten in and um, I had one house that I was doing a flip on that was a rental. I bought it from a landlord 
and the tenants got mad because they had to move out. So what they did was they poured cement down all of the toilets, right? And, and you know, and so the cement got hard. So I had to go in and we had to take out all the plumbing pipes under the foundation, 16 grand that I did not expect, right? Wow. Having to go in, dig up all of the pipes, replace the pipes and then redo, um, you know, the slab, which it cost me. And so when you think about that, you think about just pipes, but no, that had to do with all the flooring coming up, that had to do with digging all the pipes, that had to do with replacing, um, you know, the, the concrete, covering those back up, getting the inspections, and then going back with new flooring, making sure everything was good. So, you know, it's things like that where one problem can be a domino effect and lead to other issues that you have to take care of if you want the job to go well. And so, Man, I, I love building. I don't have those problems in building, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> that's fu that's funny. It's funny because it's not funny, but man. That's, right, right, <laughs> definitely. That That's a heck of a story. I've actually never heard of that. Someone pouring concrete down the pipes. Poured cement down the pipes, man. Flushed it down the toilet. And, you know, when we got all of the utilities turned on, we were wondering why the house was flooding. Had somebody come out. One of the plumbers uh, put a scope down the drain. And almost every drain in the house was filled with cement down to almost where it, it had even gone so far to where the city cleanouts were. Like it had hit where the city sewer pipes were, which could have been a major problem. Um, luckily for us, once it had traveled so far, uh, it it kind of it kind of settled a little bit. So we were able to kind of get that cut at the point to where it reached the city sewer and replace everything back to the lot. So it really, it really could have been a really, you know, worse situation if it had if it had reached the city sewer. Oh my goodness, that's that's a heck of a story, Royce. Um, you know, and I guess maybe shifting gears a bit, I, I'm I'm curious. You know, you talked a bit about you know why building is special to you, why that part of the business, and I'm curious as well a bit about about your background, maybe growing up. Uh, could you tell us, you know, where you grew up and, you know, did you see yourself in this line of work? Uh, well, I grew up um, in in Dallas, like I mentioned earlier, um, a well-known part of Dallas called Oak Cliff. So, you know, I'm an Oak Cliff native. Right. And so I grew up um, single single family household. Um, my dad was involved in my life, but him and my mom were not married, you know, during my upbringing. So um, I grew up in a single parent household. Um I grew up with an entrepreneurial mind. So I remember, I was telling this story earlier. Um, I remember seventh grade, I, I there was a candy house in my neighborhood, right? So me and the, and the guy that ran the candy house, we were pretty good because I used to work with him in the summer, like construction. We would go build fences and build decks and things like that. So I had a pretty good relationship with him. And so what I used to do was I used to go to his house and I would buy boxes of like candy bars, chips, Skittles, things like that. Then I would take it to school and I would sell it to my friends, right? And so, you know, that was one of those earlier, um, earlier experiences of entrepreneurship to where it kind of, I've, I've kind of always been this entrepreneur entrepreneur type of guy, right? Um, I've always wanted to work, work for myself. I've always had either side businesses outside of my nine to five or thinking of different ways to, to create, you know, opportunities for myself in an entrepreneurial mindset. And so um, growing up, I never thought that I would be in the position I'm in now. Like I mentioned in the summer, you know, to make money and, and kind of be productive during the summer. I used to go with this guy. And like I said, he taught me um, about the basics of construction. So I, I was really working with my hands at a young age, with help, which helped me out later on in life because I learned to do a multitude of things working with my hands, whether it was repairing something around the house, helping somebody at their house fix a, a toilet or a cabinet or something like that. And so um, I think I was probably always meant to do something in the construction industry because I love working with my hands. I love every aspect of construction. And so um, I am originally an IT guy. So I'm a network engineer by trade, right? I have 20 years of IT experience. I have two degrees and nine certifications in information technology. Um, and so after 20 years of doing IT, I really just got burnt out. And real estate has always been one of those things that I wanted to do. And I heard, I, I heard a, um, a I think it was a, um, 
an audio clip of Warren Buffett say that um, every millionaire has some part of real estate or, or is involved in some part of real estate. And that kind of struck my chord because I've always been, I've always looked at myself as a millionaire at some point, right? And so that has always been my goal to reach that level. And so hearing that, it was like, there's no other industry that I want to I want to transition to from IT to anything else but real estate. And so I jumped into real estate, man, by joining a, um, a networking group, like one of those three day networking groups. Um, I joined one of those and that's how I got started in real estate, man. And um, I've been doing it ever since. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and that's a, that's a great uh, point from Warren Buffett is you said it was Warren Buffett, right? Yeah. Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett. Okay. Yeah, no, I can, I can tell, um, you know, and I'm curious as well, you know, what are you, what are you feeding your mind? It sounds like you're, you're reading a lot of, a lot of books. Oh man. So I do, I do because I drive so much, man, I do a lot of audio books. Right. And I do a, a variety of different topics. Like I do a lot of, um, mindset books, like law of attraction type of audio books, uh, a lot of mindset books, a lot of wealth strategy books, um, you know, stuff like The Alchemist, The Millionaire Mindset, um, uh, uh, mil Nine to Five Millionaire, The Millionaire Next Door, like stuff like that are, is, is the things that I feed my mind every day. Like I try to learn something different every day. It's a must for me. Like I get up in the morning, I try to do like a five minute meditation to kind of plan out my day um you know in my mind first and then once i'm in the truck i'm in i'm i'm on the road i'm pulling up something that's going to feed me going to give me some some motivation going to give me some nuggets that i can use and that's my day man that's it yeah absolutely i mean especially if you're in the truck you know you're going side to side or driving clear across town you know you want to be able to you know give yourself something good right yeah man i probably couldn't tell you the latest song on the radio that's how long it's been since I like actually listen to the radio, man, when I'm, when I'm in my truck, man, I'm, I'm in, I'm in thought process, man. My mind is moving on. Hey, how can I do this better? Or what can I do to, to make this better or something like that? Or trying to get some nuggets on something that's going to enhance my, you know, my brand is going to enhance my business, my company and things like that. So that's really all I think about. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I love to hear it. Um, and, you know, I'm curious as well, you know, it's, it's interesting. You talked about, you know, kind of growing up in Dallas, having that entrepreneur uh, mindset. And, you know, it reminded me of something that I read uh, last year and they were talking about uh, the future is local. So mm -hmm. it, and to me, that was so interesting, you know, kind of talking to you a bit about Dallas. Could you maybe talk about, um, you know, maybe what's unique about building in Dallas or how the city's growing or what, what, what are you seeing down there? Uh, well, I mean, the, the city of Dallas, man, people, like I'm a, I'm a sports guy, sort of, kind of, right? Um, and so when when you think of like sports and things like that, they always call Dallas a small city market. Like, right? It's not one of those promotable markets like Miami or LA or New York and things like that, man. But what I like about Dallas is, it, I mean, D Dallas is really diverse, man. And there are a lot of things that go on in Dallas that, um, that are really really beneficial to the people that live here. Like Dallas is a, Dallas is a jumping city, man. Like my daughter says, Dallas is litty, man. Dallas is like, Dallas is litty, man. There are a lot of things that um, go on in Dallas, man, that benefit entrepreneurs and things like that. Like the city has, I think Dallas is one of the top cities with the most millionaires in the United States, right? And a lot of people don't know that, but there are, there are things and, and, and people and, and opportunities here that people really overlook because they think Dallas is one of those small market cities, man. And what I like about it is, you know, you're from Houston. So, you know, that's just, you know, a part of Texas. So, you know, like in Houston, we talked about it earlier, you have the suburbs of Katy and Sugarland, and, you know, you have Pearland and it kind of widens the scope of what Houston may be. Right. And it's the same thing with Dallas. I can drive 45 minutes from one side of Dallas and still be in Dallas 45 minutes later. Right. So, you know, I like that aspect as a builder because it allows me to be able to reach different communities right with what i do um right now we're building in five different counties um you know out here in the dfw area and so you know communities like southern dallas where you know fair park people call it the fair park area where i've built multiple houses i think i've built probably 10 or 12 houses in the fair park area you know those are opportunities that i like because it 
it allows me to be able to give something back to the community, right? Like areas that I grew up going to, that I grew up visiting. Like I go to the fair, me and my family go to the fair every year, right? And so now when I drive through the fair park area, I'm, I'm pointing out to my son, hey, your dad built that house. Or, you know, that's a house that I built. Like you want to go down the street and see, see some of my work. Like if I have some, some active construction sites, like I'm taking my kids there so they can actually see. And what I like about it is that for years to come, I will have a piece of that community where I grew up, right? Whether it's Oak Cliff, whether it's Dallas, whether it's Lancaster, one of the suburbs, DeSoto, Duncanville. If I have an opportunity to build in that area, then I'm going to take advantage of it because I know I know that's a part of me, right? And I like that aspect of building in Dallas. And that's one of the things I love about building here. Yeah, absolutely. And kind of a bit about what I'm getting from that, you know, you know, obviously wanting to, to provide for, for yourself and your family and those around you. But in a sense, it almost sounds like it's kind of about the impact, right? Giving something Definitely. that, you know, maybe maybe when you're not around, you know, people will be able to say, hey, this was done by you, right? Right. Definitely, man. Um, and that's that's the most important part to me is more so the the uh, giving back aspect. Right. Like making sure that, um, you know, the community is a better place than when I left it. Right. Um, you know, a lot of there are some places in Dallas that get a bad rap for um, being low income, poverty stricken areas, man. And those are the areas that I really want to build up and build houses, not, you know, expensive houses that people can't afford, but nice quality, uh, affordable housing to where people in that community have the option to come back and live because they it's a piece of them like they grew up there like they have memories there. And those are the areas that I really like building in not only because it's beneficial, you know, as a as from a market standpoint, but it also it helps the community man like it raises the property value for those who've been there. 30 or 40 years, right? And then it allows people to come back and, and, and own and have a piece of that community, man, where their heart is. So, you know, that's one of the major things for me, man, just trying to make sure that I'm I'm doing something that I'm going to, I'm going to be remembered for when I'm gone. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it's so interesting. Um, you know, I, I, I'd like to read more about, you know, maybe the way cities grow, the way cities die and just different, you know, population trends and stuff like that. And last year, I was learning a bit about. Uh, are you familiar? Are you familiar with uh, food deserts at all? No, no, no. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. So I, 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 um, not exactly sure of the exact explanation, but basically, it's just you know, if you have a particular neighborhood, um, and let's say you have a Walmart, you have an H E B, you have a Kroger, um, those big box, um, you know, retailers, those big box grocery stores, they're going to do a market analysis on, hey, what's the median income in this neighborhood, right? If it's beneath a certain level, you know, they're probably not going to build a grocery store. But so as a result, you know, maybe some of these lower, uh, you know, lower income communities, they don't have access to that sort of food and they have to travel. So they're living in a quote unquote food desert, right? Mm, okay, makes sense. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yeah, I never heard of that, man. I'm gonna have to look that up and kind of see, you know, how that impacts, you know, where I am and what I'm doing, you know, that kind of you know, it's kind of one of those things where when I get to the subdivision level, maybe there's something that I can do to partner with these um, these big box stores to kind of bring those stores to lower income levels because we're building new homes there. So you just gave me an idea, man. I told you where well, I, I, the wheels are turning, man. So you just gave me an idea, man, something I'll have to do some research, research on. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I, I love to hear it. And, uh, you know, it, I guess uh, what made me think of that was just you kind of talking about, you know, raising uh, you know, raising that uh, basically standard of living, right? So where maybe property values go up, people are, you know, uh, you know, people are, are putting money into the neighborhood, things are getting cleaned up a little bit. And then, you know, once you have that community kind of being built or rebuilt, then, you know, the retailers can come in. Right, right, right. Yeah, man. And that's, you know, that's what we look to do, man. Um, we don't, we don't go in, it's not really all about the money, the money is good. But at the end of the day, what we really want to do, man, is, is, is have an impact on the community. Like right now, man, my, one of my goals, um, because I am a builder, one of my goals, man, is to build my mom a home, right? And so I want to build her a home in the area where we grew up, right? Like, you know, my mom has been living in the house that she lives in now. She's been living in that house since I was born. And so, you know, I'm 42 years old now. So I know the house is at least 42 years old. And so one of my goals now is to find... Um, you know, a, a piece of land in the area where 
you know, where I grew up and then build my mom a newer home so that she can experience what that's like to, to still have a piece of the community, but be in a better situation of, of living in a new home. So that's one of my, one of my goals, man. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, I mean, that, that's really coming full circle then, you know, being able to, like you said, have that piece definitely. of the community yeah, and you know, making definitely. it a bit better. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you know, and that's that, that's pretty neat. And, you know, I'm curious, well, maybe someone in, uh, you know, in South Dallas, Dallas, another part of the country, regardless of where they are, they're interested in building, maybe they have some cash, maybe they're in IT, and they're sick of it. And they want to start. Oh, yeah. oh I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not to pick on IT. I'm just kind yeah, of man. using you as an example. You know, uh, for someone who's looking to start out, how would you suggest someone even get started uh, in construction or started building? Um, man, well, what it takes really, man, is really having a, a clear idea of what it is that you want to do. And then one of my, my biggest things with with starting a new venture is you want to find someone that has experience in that area. That's that's the most important thing, um, because what you don't want to do is jump in it head first, not really knowing. And everybody doesn't operate with integrity. So you have people out there that are specifically looking for newbies or newcomers that don't really know, you know, what they're doing to be able to take advantage of. Right. And so for me, like myself, man, I'm one of those guys who will lend a helping hand to anybody. Like I said earlier, I build for a lot of investors. Um, I also do uh, some coaching and some consulting for, you know, investors that want to get into the bill space, real estate agents who want to get into the bill space and just students who uh, really want to. Um, learn what it takes to build so they can start creating a legacy for themselves and for their families long term. So that's that's the most important thing that I would say. Do some research to see if it's you think it's really for you. And if it is really for you, find someone in that industry that you can kind of talk to or, or, or that can give you some advice on um, what steps you need to take in the beginning. As a builder, for me, that was the most helpful thing. So I had a I didn't start off doing this by myself. So I built my first house alone, but I had a mentor who really kind of made sure that I didn't uh, lose my pants on my first bill, right? And that really helped me a lot. So my first home that I built, I was $19,000 over budget. Um, I got the house built, the house made money, but I was $19,000 over budget. But what I did was I learned how to build a house for free, right? Because I had him side by side, right? He was there with me. Hey, you might need to do this. You might not need to do this. This is what you look for in this. This is what, you, and that helped me not be able to lose, you know, money. I was over budget, like I said, but I didn't lose money. And that's the most important thing, finding someone that can kind of assist you in getting started so that you don't, um, you don't lose more than what you gain. Yeah, absolutely. And it's one of those things, you know, do you want to bang your head against the wall or do you want to collaborate with someone else who's oh, yeah. been there before, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, one thing that, um, you know, maybe one concern that people have about is money, right? So, I mean, when you think of construction, you think of materials, right? When you think of materials, you think, hey, those materials cost money. You know, maybe uh, you don't have much money, um, but you know, maybe you're, you're well-connected in your community, whether it's Dallas or Houston, uh, Austin, wherever, um, is there a way to be able to still get into the building space or how do you go about making sure you have enough funding for these deals? Yeah, definitely, man. And so me, people have a, a real misconception about how much money it really takes to get into real estate, right? Whether that's flipping, whether that's, um, wholesaling, whether that's, you know, rental income, new construction or whatever the case may be. People, excuse me, people have a real misconception about how much money it really takes, right? Um, you know, I, I have clients that come to the table with um, sometimes 15 grand, um, sometimes 30 grand, sometimes more, right? Um, and what it really takes is an understanding of how the process works and what your avenues are to be able to be funded, right? So what I would recommend, someone concerned about financing, Find a builder that you can partner with on your first deal. Say you have, say yourself, Aaron, say you have, say 20 grand that you want to invest. Well, I'm a builder, right? So let us partner on the bill so that if you have 20 grand, we may be able to go out and purchase the land that we're going to build on for the 20 grand. And as a builder, I have partnerships with lenders to where my build experience will get you approved for a construction loan. 
right? I go in, I've built, you know, 50 houses. Well, when you go in and you say, hey, I want to go into a bank and you say, hey, I want to build a house. I have a builder that's built over 50 houses. They're going to ask me for my paperwork. I'm going to submit my paperwork and they're going to say, okay, we'll approve you for the loan, right? So now you've, you've, you've been able to purchase a lot and you've partnered with a builder that has enough experience for you to be able to get a construction loan. Now you have the two most important things that you need to build a house. You have a place to build it and you have, a, you have the money to build it. Now it's just a matter of getting it built and um, understanding your exit strategy uh, for that new construction, which is a whole different topic. But I, you know, I get into that and, and, and teach that as well. But that's a, you know, that's a whole different thing. But the two most important things is finding something to build on and then having the financing. And that's the way to do it. Most people, what, what they don't understand is most people have 401s and IRAs that they've been sitting on for years because they've been working 20 or 30 years, those IRAs and 401s can be converted for investment purposes, right? Um, you're in the real estate space, so you, you've probably heard the term of self-directed IRAs. Most people who work nine to fives don't know that they can convert their IRA or their 401k to a self-directed IRA and be able to invest in real estate, right? They can be able to take however amount of money that is and go buy land or go buy a rental property, right? And then not only that, but most of us have at least one or two people in our life that we know that has cash that won't mind lending us cash if we can prove that we'll give them a return on their investment, right? Some of us have, you know, granddads and grandmas and uncles that are looking to get a return on the money, especially the way the economy is. Everybody's looking to gain more money, gain more income, right? And so, you know, there are a multitude of ways, man, um, that you can finance a new construction deal. Partnering with somebody, like I said, um, partnering with a builder that has, you know, those banking connections, hard money loans. Right now, hard money lenders are giving loans to people that have no experience. All you have to do is have an asset based, you know, have an asset based project or a good credit score, money in the bank and hard money lenders will give you money to, to build a house. Yeah, you know, absolutely. I mean, you know, when it comes down to it, like you said, you know, it's about finding that land and then obviously consulting with someone who, who knows what they're doing and, and can help out. And you made an interesting point as well. You talked about the IRAs, those 401s, you know, maybe people are kind of in that day to day grind. Um, maybe they haven't invested their money in new construction projects. Could, could you maybe talk about, you know, why that is, you know, maybe not to rag on people, but, you know, maybe why someone would rather keep something in a 401k than, than be open to doing something like the self-directed route? The, the, the main reason I think why is because they think that IRAs and 401ks are the safer option, mm -hmm. right? Getting into a field or an industry where you have no experience or no knowledge that can be a risky thing, right? Like me jumping from IT to real estate was like, when I left my nine to five job, I was making like $108,000 a year, right? And so I, I quit and was like, I don't know if real estate is going to pay me $108,000 a year. Like that bothered me. Like I was worried about that, but it was a risk that I was willing to take. And I think most people they're afraid of the risk, right? They think because they have it in an IRA or they have it in a 401k that it's safe, right? But the way the economy is going now, they're probably losing more money in the 401k than they would if they pulled it out, invested in real estate and tried to create some extra income by building a new construction house. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess like anything, you know, the, the unfamiliar, you know, whether it's real estate or, you know, anything really in life, maybe, you know, the unfamiliar or something different can be a bit scary for people. Oh, yeah, definitely, man. Anything. And that's just I mean, that's life in general, man. The unknown is the, the scariest thing. But this is this is one of those things where if you're afraid to take the risk, then you'll never you never know what you can achieve. Right. It's 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 if you're going to fly or you're going to be fearful. Right. Fear. You know, you, you can't let fear operate you. Right. You can't let fear control you. You have to operate in in a manner of knowing that what you're meant to do, the universe will allow. And I call it the universe. People call it God. I call it God as well. Like I'm, I'm, I'm a believer in God as well, but I, I speak in terms of law of attraction. So I say the universe. But you have to you have to have a mindset that 
no matter what, you believe that the universe is conspiring to help you at all times, right? And so there's a reason why you may have an abundance of money in a 401k, right? It may be meant for you to step out on faith and, and start that business or get into real estate if that's what you've been thinking about for the last five years or whatever the case may be. You just have to be willing to take that action to actually know. This is what I know for sure, Aaron. Nobody will ever let themselves fail if they've put something on the line, mm. period. Nobody will ever let themselves fail if they put something on the line. So most people fail when it doesn't cost them anything. What it costs you, you continue to, to move forward in until you succeed in it, right? I know a lot of entrepreneurs who they started a business, they fail, but because they lost money in that business, that was something that they couldn't live with. Like I can't live with losing this. So now I have to do something different or I have to figure out a way I can get that money back or be successful in that area. And, you know, that's what people have to do, man, especially in this industry. But real estate is one of those things where, um, I mean, there's more millionaires made than you. Warren Buffett, there's more millionaires made in real estate than any other industry in the world. Absolutely. And, and I'm curious as well. Um, do you think it's more, is it an ego thing? Do, do you think, you know, maybe someone goes into a deal or into, into a business, it doesn't work out and they take it, you know, as, as a bruise to their ego or something like that? Uh, it could be. And sometimes it just depends on the person right most times it's it's that thing of um it it it, it puts a bruise in their confidence right if i go into a deal and i lose 50 grand which i've done before right uh one of the houses that i did earlier on in my my real estate um journey i had a contractor steal fifty thousand dollars right I could have taken that experience and said, you know what, there's no way that I'm going to do real estate again, right? There's no way that I can risk losing another 50 grand, right? I could have said that, but I didn't. What I did was I said, listen, these are things that happen, right? If I don't learn from this, then I could never be better the next time. And yes, I lost 50 grand, 25 grand of that was another investor's money, which I had to then replace out of my own pocket. But what I learned was that this is this is a stepping stone for where I am now. Right. And so um, because of that, I was able to to learn different things on my next couple of projects. And so I've never had a, a drastic thing like that happen again. But I mean, it, it's 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 about fear, man. Once people get a sense of fear in them, it's like it paralyzes them. And, you know, some people just can't get past it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's one of those things that, and you even kind of alluded to it as well as really, you know, just being able to kind of psychologically overcome that and then, you know, coming back, you know, even harder. Yeah, definitely, man. And I mean, it, it takes that, you know, sometimes, you know, you don't have um, people around you or support system to lift you up when those things happen. Like you have a lot of people around you, but you know, a lot of people don't know how to, uh, comfort a loss of $50,000. Like people that, especially people that don't have $50,000, they don't know what it feels like to lose $50,000. Right. So you have to it within yourself say, you know what, I'm not going to let this hinder me. I'm not going to let this hold me back. I'm going to learn from it and I'm going to move forward to be successful in other areas. And, you know, that's one of those things that I did. And so, you know, it's just about mindset again. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you you mentioned something really interesting as well was kind of talking about, you know, your inner circle, right, that community of people mm. that you're putting around yeah. you. And, yeah. you know, I know that at least over these past few years, uh, really for the whole world collectively, we're coming out of a very weird time, right? You know, isolation, loneliness, people are disconnected, they're more connected with their cell phone than maybe with their neighbor or their brother or sister or something like that. Maybe someone out there is really starving for that sense of commonality, that sense of community. They know they're wanting to get into the real estate game. They don't know how. Where, where do you go? How do you build that, that good group of people that you're looking for? Uh, man, what it really takes, man, is, is stepping out of your shell. Like if you're not comfortable talking to people, 
that's one of the things that you have to change, right? Like you have to, you have to be able to step out of your shell, man. What I did when I first started and I didn't know anybody in the industry, again, I came from IT. So when I got into real estate, I had no idea about what to do in real estate. I knew, I didn't know one real estate agent, anything, right? And what I did was I went to networking events, like on a regular basis. I was at maybe two or three networking events, um, introducing myself, just kind of learning the lingo of real estate, meeting new people that were doing the same thing that I was doing. Um, and, you know, that kind of got me into some relationships that kind of benefited me later on down the line. Maybe some people that were in real estate longer than me that had a banking connection or they had a realtor connection or they had, you know, someone that was doing the same thing as me that I could learn from, right? And so um, I would say, get out of your comfort zone. Like if you're one of those introverts, man, one of those people who stay at home, man, go try, try going to one networking event once a week. And just meeting new people, mingling, you know, finding out what they do, how they can assist you and how you can be a benefit to them. And, and then your network will start to grow. And so I live by the, uh, the cliche term, your network, your net worth is your network or your network is your net worth, right? The top five people that you talk to the most are the people that are most influential in your life that allow you to be able to do what you do on a successful level, right? So I listen to, like I said, I listen to a lot of audio, a lot of podcasts. And so what I've been focusing on lately is the people that are around me in my circle. I do not want to have low level conversations at all. I'm only focusing on high level conversations that are purposeful, that have meaning and that have value. Right. And so the people around you, you want to you want to keep people around you that have value that have purpose, that have meaning. So every conversation is a conversation about growth. It's a conversation about ideas. It's a conversation about getting to the next level, right? Because, I mean, you, you, it, I, I use this analogy a lot. Like I speak to, to kids sometimes at school when it comes to relationships, and I use this analogy a lot. Every relationship is like an ATM machine, right? An ATM machine, you deposit money in, you get money out right? There's so much money that you can put in to an ATM machine that, that you're actually giving to someone else, right? But what happens when the time that you need to get something out of the ATM? What happens? If there's nothing that you can get in your time of need from the ATM, then, then what do you do? You're left stuck, you're left drained, you're left hopeless, right? And so you want to build relationships to where people are pouring into you. People are adding value into you because that keeps you adding value into them and adding value into the community and adding value into your industry and things like that. So just one of those things, man. Yeah. You know, and I, I love that comparison, Royce. And it's, um, you know, it's, it's really something to think about, right? Especially, you know, with everything, everything being so digital, maybe you, you get that dopamine, you get a few likes here and there, but at the end of the day, uh, who's in your corner, right? Who can you right. really lean on right. and who can lean on you? Yeah, definitely, man. That's one of the most important things. Like I'm a relationship guy, right? So in my, in my business and my company, that's what I focus on. I focus on building relationships. Like my subcontractors, I, I know them, like I know their wives, I know their kids, right? Like I go to, you know, I sponsor some of my subcontractors, kids, uh, soccer teams and things like that, right? Because I'm a relationship guy. I know that successful relationships create successful people. That's a, that's a proven fact, right? And so, I mean, you have to be able to step out of your, your, your box and your comfort zone to create these relationships because you never know. Like you're only, I heard this a while ago and I, it kind of stuck with me through life. You're only one person away from your next breakthrough, mm -hmm. right? So I may be at McDonald's or I may be at, you know, uh, a restaurant getting something to eat. And the guy next to me may be the guy that has knowledge on building a subdivision or has the $200 million I need to build a subdivision or whatever the case may be, right? And so you're only one person away from your breakthrough. And if you don't, if you don't create an atmosphere of connections or relationships, then man, it's harder to do things by yourself than it is to do things with others, man. I tell you, I promise you it is. Yeah, ain't that the truth? And you know, that's that's so. I've actually never heard that. You're just one person away from 
uh, from a breakthrough, which, you know, it's, Definitely. it, it, uh, it's an exercise of courage too. maybe to just go to one more networking event or it. just, just reach out to one more friend and ask them how they're doing. You know, you'd be surprised. Yeah, man, that's it, man. And that, uh, that's the thing. Like you, you never know, you know, you never know what the universe is bringing to you, but you have to be in a mindset to, to receive it. Like you're, I, I, I mean, I, I'm really big into, vibrational energy, law of attraction, things like that. So I believe what you give out, you get back, right? And so if you're in a mindset that, and, and I had this problem when I first came into real estate, right? Because I'm a young, I'm a young black guy. I'm from an urban community. Um, I have tattoos up and down my arm. Um, I was young, younger then. And so I had this, this mindset of a stigma that nobody is going to want to work with me. Right. Because I'm a young black guy and and the stereotypes of young black guys with tattoos or they don't do good business. They're they're thugs. They get into trouble, things like that. So I had this mindset that, man, there's no way that I could get into this and be successful because nobody's going to work with me. Right. There's no way that I could have Indian clients and white clients and Mexican clients. There's no way because they're not going to work with me. Right. So then I had to change my mindset to say, you know what, I will allow I will allow my confidence in myself and the vibrational energy that I put off to attract those that are meant to be partners with me to me. And that's what I did, man. I focused on doing good quality work. I focused on always operating with integrity. I focused on respecting people, building relationships. And right now, man, I have a... Um, a variety of nationalities that are my clients. Like I said, I have Indian clients and Mexican clients and white clients and black clients. And, you know, I'm looking for purple and green clients if they come, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it's, it's just about, it's just about mindset, man, and creating the environment and atmosphere that you want to attract. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I, I love that mindset shift because, you know, it's, it can be difficult for people, right? You know, maybe you're, uh, maybe you grew up a certain way or, you know, you kind of uh, understood to believe something. And then, you know, it, it takes time to be able to kind of make that mindset shift and say, hey, you know, there's a ton of people out there who want to work with me, you know? Definitely. Yeah, definitely, man. And I definitely had to do it, man. I'm telling you. Yeah, I love it, Royce. You know, well, is there anything that you haven't said for us that you'd really just like to hit home? Um, man, you know what? It's just one of those things where no matter no matter where you are right now, um, as far as in your life, no matter where you are in your, uh, your, your real estate journey or whatever the case may be, anything is possible. Um, start with, you know, the belief in yourself. Uh, that's first and foremost, that's key, believing in yourself that you can do it. Uh, find something that you'll have a passion in so that you can stick with it long term, right? Never give up. Don't be so easy to quit. Uh, find somebody you know, that, that you can lean on, that can be an accountability partner for you. Um, and, and that will help your success. Right. And, um, it's just one of those things, man, where you really have to know that what's meant for you is for you and you can achieve anything. Like I'm a, I'm a, a living example, man. I, 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 man, I build houses every day and no real estate experience before jumping into this industry. No, prior building experience. My dad wasn't a builder. My granddad wasn't a builder. And so now I am um, creating a legacy for my family just based on knowing that I could do this, believing that I could do this. And everybody has that same ability, man. I won't get too churchy and start preaching on you, man, but everybody has that same ability, man, to, um, to live out their dreams and their desires. Absolutely. You know, that's, I think that's an excellent way to wrap up the show uh, on, a, on a real positive note like that. And, you know, it's, uh, it, it's neat. You know, you mentioned how maybe, you know, your grandfather, your father, you know, they weren't builders, but really, you know, just coming in and, and doing your best work and, and leaving something, uh, leaving that legacy behind. So I think that's great. Definitely, man. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely, Royce. You know, maybe someone's in, uh, you know, in your part of your part of town, right? Maybe they're, you know, in Dallas, maybe another part of Texas, another part of the country, or they just want to, you know, consult with you about uh, about building and construction. You know, what, where can we find you? I can be reached um, on all social media platforms. On Facebook, uh, you can reach me at R Dyson Kali. Uh, on Instagram, I'm the Gentleman Builder or R Dyson Kali. I have a couple of pages. I also have a YouTube channel, the Gentleman Builder. 
Um, you can reach me in any of those platforms. Uh, my email address uh, is rdysoncolly at gmail.com, or you can reach my company email address, which is rlcdgroup at gmail.com. And um, man, I'm here to answer any questions, help you guys. I have a, um, a platform to where I am getting ready to release a mini course on how to build um, new construction homes, which will also lead into uh, the major course, which is the new construction and how to invest in new construction and turn that into um, legacy building through rental portfolios and owner finance projects. Absolutely. And, you know, we'll definitely, you know, for those of us, uh, you know, who are interested in, in clicking on those links, we'll have those in the, in the description below in, in the video description, you know, Royce, um, you know, thank you for coming on the show. I've really enjoyed you know, hearing a bit about, you know, your background, your mindset, you know, leaving that legacy behind something bigger, bigger than yourself, uh, how to get started building and, you know, really just overcoming those obstacles and, and coming out on the other end better for it. So, you know, again, thank you so much. And uh, it, it was a great conversation with you. Oh, man, thank you. Like I say, I appreciate you having me, man. I enjoy myself likewise. And um, anytime, man, I appreciate it. Sounds great. We'll talk to you later. All right. Thank you.